A total of 38 people have died and 24 are reported missing after a part of a highway bridge collapsed due to a sudden flash flood in Jiaxue County of Shanglua, northwest China's Shangxi province. The area where the bridge on the Danning Highway fell had experienced heavy rains in the preceding days. At least 25 cars fell into the river, according to CCTV, and teams have searched kilometers downstream looking for victims. A photo released by the Xinhua News Agency shortly after the incident showed a section of the bridge snapped and folded at almost a 90-degree angle into the rushing brown water below. The river passes through a mountain valley and the waters are turbulent, the report said. In Sichuan province's Kangding city, Heavy rains caused flash flooding and landslides on Saturday, sweeping away houses and killing two people. Twelve more are missing. The collapse has raised questions about the safety of China's road and bridge infrastructure, which was built rapidly in recent decades. A similar highway collapse in May in Guangdong province killed 36 people. A nearby highway bridge connecting two tunnels also collapsed. Rescuers have so far counted three vehicles missing, and one person has been rescued, while five are missing. The Wagner Group of Russia isn't just active in Ukraine. It also has a presence in many other countries, including Syria or Mali. Recently, Troops of Russia's Wagner Group were seen in Venezuela during protests following disputed election results. The sighting has raised concerns about Russian involvement in the country's internal affairs. According to Militarni media outlet, Wagner was spotted among Venezuelan police officers during protests against President Maduro. It is noted that released footage shows a man in a camouflage suit with a Wagner group insignia standing among the police officers. Venezuela and Russia have maintained close military and economic ties for years. Russia is one of the largest creditors of the Venezuelan government. The presence of Wagner Group mercenaries in Venezuela is seen as a sign of Russia's continued support for Maduro's government. Venezuela's Electoral Council released the results shortly after midnight on July 29, indicating that Maduro won with 51.2% of the vote, while opposition leader Edmundo González received 44.2%. This contrasted with exit polls and documentation the opposition had collected from around 40% of voting centers that seemed to show Gonzalez winning with 70% of the vote. The opposition immediately called the results into question, claiming that they had not been verified. International observers likewise cast doubt on the results' validity. Protests against this lack of transparency began the day after the election and have continued. While such mobilization against the government has become a feature of Chavista Venezuela, the current protests are notable for the range of people coming out onto the streets. Miren, miren esto. Qué horrible. No puedo ir al balcón porque me da miedo. Voy a dejar ya de grabar. Mira, la única, la única estatua de Chávez que no ha tumbado es esta. Y la van a tumbar de bola. Ya hoy menos, no joda. Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov has called people calling for a hijab ban in Russia, enemies of Islam, and vowed to kill anyone who tells his daughter to take off her hijab. Kadyrov said this at a meeting of the Chechen government. Whoever tells my daughter to take off her hijab, I will kill on the spot, whoever it is, I will shoot. He is an enemy, my personal enemy, an enemy of Islam, said the head of Chechnya. At that moment, Kadyrov's daughter, Ashat Kadyrova, the vice president of the Republican government, was shown in the video. The head of Chechnya noted that many visitors from different denominations come to the Republic. We do not interfere with their clothing style, we do not punish them, but we encourage people to wear hijab. At the same time, Kadyrov said that he is against wearing a burqa that covers the face. 
At the end of May, the deputy chairman of the State Duma, Vyacheslav Devankov, presented a draft law that prohibits religious clothing, including clothing that partially or completely hides the face of educational institutions. The regulation states that the initiative is aimed at strengthening the secular nature of education. State Duma deputy from Chechnya Adam Delikhanov criticized the bill. He emphasized that the Chechen authorities will not approve of wearing a niqab covering the face and that the hijab is a religious duty of a Muslim woman. Devenkov noted that there is no need for such restrictions in national republics where people are loyal to traditions. In June, the head of the Russian investigative committee, Alexander Bastrykin, called for an urgent ban on wearing the niqab in Russia in connection with the latest terrorist attacks by Islamists. After that, the muftis of Dagestan and Karakaycherkessia imposed a temporary ban on wearing the niqab in their regions.